Hello YouTube and Explorer Forum. Nate here with my 94 Explorer. And I was just doing some work and thought I would uh, show you guys how to test the coil. Uh, this is the 4.0 uh, push rod. This is the engine that came with the 91 to 94 Explorers. Also Rangers, Mazda B2000, I think they are. Uh, they were even in the Broncos, Aerostars, uh, quite a few of them. But this actually applies to a lot of different coil packs, the same principle, to a lot of Ford coils, uh, Mustangs, and all that fun stuff. So, first off, that is where the coil is. It's a coil pack. This is a waste spark system, and what that means is that each pair fires at the same time. Now, they don't fire in the same direction. What happens is energy is built up in the coil and sent out one spark plug through the wire into the spark plug into the block, back out into the uh, companion cylinder through its spark plug into the wire back into the other side of the coil. So one is technically firing from uh, the center electrode to the ground electrode and the other spark plug is firing from the ground electrode to the center electrode. Um, this happens on uh, the first cylinder fires on compression while the other one's firing on exhaust. That's what happens. And so because of this, if you unplug one wire, you're killing two cylinders, which in the V6 is 130 your power. So that's why coil testing can be kind of important because if even one coil isn't working right, you have serious power loss. So this video, I'm gonna show you how to test it, at least with a multimeter. It still can fail even though it may test near or within spec, but um, it can fail hot or short out. But this is just kind of a general idea to see if it's totally dead, which is what I'm doing. So here's some information. I will post a link, or actually I'll embed the picture right now. But this shows you what the specs are supposed to be. Now the primary is what this circuit is going to be. It's the power coming into the coil, which then charges the primary side of the coil. And when that collapses, it sends power to the secondary coil. I may have that wrong, but that's kind of close theory of operation. Anyway, um, so the primary coil is sent from the ICM, which is this little guy down here, where is it? There it is, that guy. It's the EDIS module. It's the ICM in front of the battery. So your spark comes from there. So the primary coil is has to be tested and it needs to be within 0.3 to 0.9 ohms. I'll show you how to test that. The secondary coil is what fires your spark plugs, I should say. That, obviously, is these towers here. So, they are supposed to be within 11 to 17,000 ohms. So, it's kind of easy to test the secondary coil. All you need is a regular multimeter. And I'm going to set it on the 20K setting because we need to be within 11 and 17,000 ohms and that will give us our 1,000 ohm reading. So you take your positive and negative and put them in there and that's what you get. 13.1 thousand ohms, which as you can see is within spec. And so we do that for the others there we go, 13.11 and 13.34. It's okay if there's deviance like that. Um, you just don't want two of them being 13 and then the next one being 20. That's kind of out there. But as long as they're all close like that, that's what matters. So, how do we test the primary side? Well, you can get T-pins in the back here, which I just tried to do. And it's not the end of the world. 
For those that don't know, this is what a T-pin is. You'll actually find them in the sewing aisle of Walmart and Joanne Fabrics and all that kind of places. And basically what you would do is you would take the T-pin and you would take your alligator clip onto the T-pin and then you would back probe you slide it in next to the wire. Kind of hard to do one-handed. Like that. And you make sure it's in there and seated. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pierce with the point. That will create a point for corrosion to come in. Um, I just tried that on this and it wasn't that great. I didn't get that great of test results. So, I opted to just remove the connector Take my alligator clips, I'll try to do this one-handed, and then since these are flat, you can pinch the alligator clip on it, slide the insulation down, and now that end is your ground, at least on this coil pack. The furthest wire is the red one right there. So it's going to be, is that, no, I think that's power. And then I think it's grounded by the ICM. Either way, that is what you want to test on. That will be one of your leads. Uh, can't do that one-handed. Okay. There. So that's lead one. Lead two, we do the same thing. And then we just take it over to the next one. Now, our meter says zero. What we need to do is change the scale down to 200, which gives us our 0.3 to 0.9. And this one is 0.7, perfectly fine. And so we change that over Let's see. Really hard to do one-handed. There's our next one over, 0.7 again. And there's our third one, 0.7. So as you can see, that's how you can test the coil. Now, obviously this doesn't test it while hot, which would be a wise thing to do, but it at least gives you an indication of whether or not you're gonna get spark on all cylinders as long as your wires are okay. Those, you basically do the same thing. You just run one wire in here, one wire in here, do a continuity check between the two. And for most of these, these are really old wires, but most of them I was getting 10 to 13K, 13,000 ohms. That's kind of high, but as long as they got continuity and they're all about the same, that's that's pretty much what counts now if you get one that's up in the millions of ohms then you need to replace it um, and then obviously if you get one without continuity you need to replace that too so yeah i'll post the uh the proper testing image in the description as well as embedded in the video but yeah that's how you test the coil pack on a ford